I believe we have reached a point in our discussion with the typical hobbyist where we need to be setting down some specific guidelines. The very idea of a deep substrate, much less a dirted deep substrate, remains confusing and frightening for the great preponderance of fish keepers. And it should not be. So what can we do to bring about a greater comfort level for folks who really want to be able to keep a natural aquarium to keep fish alive, healthy, happy, and spawning? Well, I think the first thing really is to get clear about what natural really means. And it's not a matter of appearance. It really is not. A natural tank, a truly, a truly natural tank can be utterly nasty looking. It can be the ugliest thing you've ever seen. Or it can be the most beautiful. The aesthetics is, has no relevance at all to whether the system is natural. In other words, whether it looks natural or doesn't look natural has no bearing on whether, in fact, the tank is a natural system. Ha! Okay. It's important to get that. Because if you look at a tank and say, wow, that's beautiful, it looks so natural, well, maybe it does, but maybe it is utterly synthetic. Maybe there's not a single natural element about it. Appearance has nothing to do with whether a tank is, in fact, a natural tank. So, having said that, what do we then mean by a natural tank. What is it really? Well, if we think about it for a minute, it, obviously it means that it's an environment that reflects as best we're able to do it, an environment out in the world, uh, in a pond, or a stream, or a river, or a lake, some body of water somewhere that's functioning that's been there for a hundred to a thousand years that fish are living in, that plants are growing in, that all sorts of microscopic life is going on in, a system that is balanced and thriving and productive. We can call that a natural environment. So, how do we reflect that or achieve that in our aquarium? That's really the key, isn't it? How do we get that, that, that pond or that creek, the environment that's there, how do we take that out of there and put it in our tank and keep it going? Well, it may seem like a daunting task, but it really is not. It really is quite simple, but it's based on a few things that most hobbyists are frankly deathly afraid to do. And the first one is bringing anything into, the, into their tank that comes out of the wild. Deathly afraid to do it. How frightening, how harrowing. How absolutely beside oneself they get when I say, go out and collect a bunch of leaves and bring them in and put them in your tank. And what's the first question? Should I bleach them first? Should I boil them first? And the answer, of course, is no. You take them out of the pond, you put them in your tank. 
Now, if you're really afraid to do that, put them in a jar. We have a little construct we call a resurrection jar. And it's for people who are apprehensive about putting anything from the wild into their tank. They put it in the jar first. And they put it on the window ledge and they watch what happens. And the more they watch, the more excited they get. And the more they want to be able to have that environment in their aquarium. So it's a two-step kind of approach. And it helps to overcome the apprehension. Okay, so that's leaves. What about sand? What about collecting wild sand and put it in your tent? Oh, should I boil it first? Should I dry it out? Should I put it in the sun? Shall I pour bleach to it? Shall I kill it? <laughs> Make sure everything is dead? No. No. You want to keep everything that's in it, that's alive, alive in your tank. Oh, but what if I bring something horrible in? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If you bring something horrible in that kills all your fish, I wouldn't know about it. I wouldn't know about it. Because I've been doing this for... 50 years, 50 years, thousands of tanks, not just hundreds, thousands. I have never one time brought something in that killed everything in my tank. I think two times I brought disease in, some kind of bacteria that attacked the fish. You know what I did about it? I brought more bacteria in to counteract the bacteria that was causing the problem. In other words, I overwhelmed the system with biodiversity. I overwhelmed the system with biodiversity. Biodiversity is the key to achieving a balanced, healthy aquarium. Now, how do you get that? Well, you're not going to get it from your local pet store. They don't sell biodiversity, at least not as such. Where you will get it is in, the, in your backyard. You'll get it from that little stream down the street. You'll get it from the pond in the field. You'll get it from wherever there is a healthy body of water. Now, I'm not talking about something that's rancid, that's foul, that has an oil slick on it, that obviously is dead. That obviously is horrible. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something healthy, where fish are living, where plants are growing, where it's obvious that this is a place filled with life. That's what you want to find. And that's what you want to collect out of and bring that in. Bring starting with the substrate, the dirt, the mud the sand, the gunk at the bottom. Get some of that. Enough to put about an inch in the bottom of your brand new tank. One inch of mud. Now, I sell a supplement. If you were to really get carried away with this, that you can put in that mud, mix it in there with a few other ingredients that will allow it to thrive for five to ten years until such time as it takes on a life of its own and becomes a permanent structure. Okay, do that. Put it in there. Now, here's the key. This is important. This is absolutely vital if you want to be able to keep this as an, as, as, uh, an aquarium that you're going to enjoy that you're going to have some control over, that's not going to go crazy on you. Pour two inches of sand right on top of that dirt before you put water in it. An inch of mud, supplements, mix it up. Two inches of sand, not gravel, not gravel. Gravel is too large. Water flows through it too easily. One of the primary purposes 
of the two inches of sand. It's to keep the water from getting down in that mud and bringing it back up. Now, Lucas believes I can do with less than two inches. If you want to try it, try it. I've tried it, and it's tough. You have to have no flow of any kind. That means no filtration of any kind, because you don't want current. Not if you're going to have just one inch of sand, because that current will work through it, and it'll pull that dirt right up into the water column. Two inches of sand, you can have a little current. It's only going to go down about an inch. It's not going to pull the dirt out. Two inches of sand. Now, what's next? What's next is to put a, put a plastic bag over that sand or a plate. Anything large and solid so that when you put the water in, it doesn't percolate the sand. You don't want to stir that all up. Put it in slowly, gently, carefully. Fill it up to within an inch or two. Take the plate or plastic bag or whatever it is that's been protecting the sand out. And you're going to have a pretty clear tank. Might be a little cloudy. Might be. If it does, put a little sponge filter in there. It'll clear up in a day. Even without that, it'll clear up in a day. So what do you have now? Well, you've got the foundation of a natural environment. That's it. I mean, that's it. That is the foundation of a natural environment. What you do with that will determine how pretty it is. How diverse the plants are. How diverse, for that matter, the biology, the entire biology is. Because you want to be bringing in a diversity of life. Bring in what's called humus. Humus, that's leaf mulch. Why leaf mulch? Because researchers have demonstrated that the foundation of life in a freshwater environment is, guess what? tree leaves. Leaves. It, leaves are the foundation of life in fresh water environments. Now, probably not on the tundra in Canada or the Antarctic, because there aren't any trees there. But in every temperate and tropical zone on Earth, where there is water and there are trees, the, 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 the life force in that body of water is nurtured by the leaves of the trees. They break down. They feed a wide range of critters. Fungus and bacteria are the first. Fungus and bacteria. You never thought about fungus and bacteria in your tank, did you? Well... Fungus and bacteria are critical. They're foundational. Where do you get fungus and bacteria? Well, you can buy a jar of bacteria. It'll have two or three types in it. Maybe more if you're lucky. It's not going to have the diversity that uh, a similar volume of liquid or humus coming out of the wild will have. If that's been there a hundred years... There are going to be a thousand species of bacteria and fungus in it. You bring all that in, now you've got something. Now you've got a life force. Now you have the, the beginnings of a balanced environment. Now you have something where all of the living organisms are interacting with each other and achieving a harmonious balance. Not one of them is able to dominate. They, they're like crabs in a basket. <laughs> they keep each other down. They don't allow one to crawl out. They pull them back in. you got a balanced environment by having greater diversity. 
Now, nobody in a pet shop is going to tell you this. You're not going to get this there. Unless it's a very unusual shop like Father Fish was. What you're going to get is, oh, buy this, buy that here. You need this, buy that. They'll fill your basket up with 50 different things, none of which you need. All of which are an attempt to create what we're doing out of our local pond without spending any money at all to do it. So, let's leave it at that for now. Natural. Natural doesn't mean you go to the store and buy it. You don't. Because it's not for sale. You can't find it in a store. Not by and large. There are a few, very few, precious few. One I know of and it closed. Might be another one. Might be. Maybe you'll start one. I did it for 20 years. It wore me out. <laughs> Not keeping it up. Just keeping the door open. Anyway. A natural environment. Not just something that looks pretty, something that is alive. That's what we're going for. Life. Bring life into your tank. Not just the fish, not just the plants, but the myriad hundreds and thousands of species of microfauna, microflora, bacteria, fungus, all of the other animalcules and plant life that live microscopically in your substrate, in your water column, on your plants, and with your fish. Let's work toward creating that. Then we'll have a natural aquarium. And I'll leave you with, just do it. Don't be afraid of it. Don't back off. Don't be paranoid. Don't be freaked out. Just do it. And you'll discover that nature really does know what nature is doing. And really does know how to achieve exactly what you're setting up that aquarium to achieve. A natural, beautiful system that takes care of itself. Bye for now. Father Fish. Catch up with us Friday nights and Sunday nights live stream on YouTube. We have uh, a uh, Discord channel where lots of people are getting lots of help, giving and receiving, and lots of friendships being built. It's a place to learn more about just what we're talking about. This is a campaign, folks, and we're going to win it. It's a struggle, and it's a long-term one. And we got lots of people who are scared to death of what we're suggesting. But try. Try it. Try it in a little jar, sitting on a windowsill. You'll be astounded. And you'll want to make it bigger and do more with it. God bless you all. Father Fish, bye for now.